Aloha and welcome to another Monday Mixed Plate. Today we do indeed have a true mixed plate of first impressions of new skincare. Everything here I've used less than two weeks. Some of it has been gifted to me through Beauty Heroes and some of it I purchased with my own money. Some of it has me really excited and intrigued and wanting to use it more and some of it just leaves me kind of confused or I'm like, mm, maybe it's not for me. Uh, anyway, I'm excited to kind of unpack everything. I want to tell you up front everything I'm going to talk about. I'll timestamp it below so you can decide if you want to listen to the whole thing or if you're just tuning in for one product spe in specific. Um, okay, so the first up is the Le Premier Beauty Oil, Plum Beauty Oil, and Sunscreen. This is being featured in a Beauty Heroes Limited Edition box. Um, so I wanted to get these first impressions up for anyone who might be wanting to jump in because it is a limited offering. Next up, I'm going to be talking about the Ilia Sea Beyond Triple Serum SPF. Um, this is new. We all get excited about a new Ilia product, and there are a couple things that made this more exciting to me um, and made me want to buy it with my own money. Then I'll be talking about the Kinship Self Reflect Rose Sunscreen. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this. This brand has really cute, fun marketing, um, and so I wanted to give it a try. And last, I'll be talking about the Beauty Heroes June box that features Lil Fox, Ambrosia Immortalis, and the Blue Legume Mask. I already talked about these on Instagram, so I'm talking about these last in case you already caught that. Um, but yeah, I'll be giving some first impressions on these as well. So first up, Le Prunier. All right, this brand is very simple. In fact, they just came on the market with this one product, Plum Beauty Oil. Um, it was a bold move, right? Some people don't understand it, but for me personally, as someone who's worked with trying to source quality ingredients, I understand why they wanted to just lead with what they felt was their best foot forward, was an oil that they had a hand in producing and pressing um, that, that was generationally passed down in a sense to them. Um, and the, the oil itself for people who live in warm climates or for certain skin types, like it really does feel like a very substantial step in your routine. So first up, the oil has this really dense texture that reminds me of argon or marula oil or Kalahari melon seed oil. How it goes on dense gives you this gorgeous glow but doesn't feel greasy. It has a really sweet scent to it. Um, it's, it's really lovely, to be honest. I'm really blown away by it, um, and I'm going to be using it daily for the next 30 days because I am very much into the idea of using an antioxidant-rich oil for my AM oil. This fits the bill in that it, the scent fills me with joy when I wake up in the morning, um, and it plays well under products. So I'll be excited to use this. I... I mean, I can see why they, they just felt confident in this one thing. Um, because the oil itself really does feel luxurious and can play well with the current skincare makeup trends on the market. And I'll get into that in just a minute when we talk about the Ilia. But this is the type of oil that you layer underneath RMS or Gressa or this because it gives you that dense emollient like lotion like feel without any waxes or butters or any other the things that you add in a moisturizer so anyway already really impressed going to be using i already just talked about it for two minutes straight <laughs> okay then it follows up with their sunscreen i was really excited to see this brand, right, that's only had one product launch a sunscreen. I felt like it was a very bold, confident move, and I felt like it really speaks to their understanding of their skin, what their oil can do, and the current trends on the market, and the idea that a minimalist routine truly does support the skin more than using a thousand products. So I felt just automatically so intrigued by this brand's choice to move straight into a sunscreen. And so it was not what I expected. I expected it to be using this dense oil and be feeling really oily and luxurious, but it's not. It dries to a velvet matte finish 
and it does feel like a skin prep tool. Okay, and some further thoughts on that is I can really see how this supports the idea that this is a one-step routine with the plum oil. You apply your sunscreen that has a velvet matte finish, and then you're ready for any type of makeup or other prep products that you're gonna put on. Um, so in my mind, it feels like very smart decisions by this brand. And uh, for me personally, I have a very active lifestyle. I live in a very hot, humid climate, so I'm gonna have to see and play with this to see how it like can function in my routine specifically. Um, I tend to use like a really dense oil-based sunscreen that will hold up to a lot of sweat in the tropics, but it being summertime and the skin just wanting less and less, it feels like a perfect time to be playing with these. So if you're interested in this box or you have any more questions, drop them in the comments below. But that is my uh, really lengthy verbose first impressions. All right, let's move on to the Ilia C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. So when this first came out, I was like, hmm, I'm always interested in a new Ilia product, but it felt really similar to their Super Serum Skin Tint. Um, the marketing was sort of similar. They both contain niacinamide. They're both trying to be skincare and makeup. They're both foundational, like sort of one product. Um, all you need is one product, minimalist, my skin but better products. Like I was confused in my mind, like where they drew the line over who that consumer would be that would be purchasing this over the Super Serum Skin Tint. So I kind of just like wrote it off in my mind because the Super Scarum Skin Tint didn't work for me. But then I found out that it has L-ascorbic acid in it. And I was like, well, when does Green Clean Beauty ever dare to dip a toe into L-ascorbic acid? So I'm like, I think I'm going to have to try that product. Um, it's a waterless product. And it really reminds me of Gressa Minimalist Corrective Serum Foundation. You know, Gressa was first in pioneering that sort of technology of foundation pigments in oil. And we've seen a lot of brands sort of copy it, Kosa's. Um, and now this feels really, really similar in its texture and performance. So it's uh, really lightweight. It's really... Um, it's not dewy at all the way the Minimalist Corrective Serum Foundation is. I'm sorry. It's not dewy at all like the Super Serum Skin Tint is. That one is super dewy and youthful and glowy glazed donut. And this feels much more on the matte side. So I'm excited to play with this over the summertime because it feels, uh, it feels like it will work for me well over the summer. My only question is though, is this like, how do I put it in my routine? And because it doesn't have a lot of binders in it, do I just use it as my only sunscreen? Because that makes me nervous. Um, will it stand up to sweat? It's oil-based, so it should be more substantial, but it's just like, I, it's the same problem I had with the Super Serum Skin Tint. It's just like, I can't use it as my only SPF. And if I can't use it as my only SPF, then why am I gonna double down with this and the Ilia, um, the Suntegrity Impeccable Skin, which also has oil-soluble vitamin C. So I always come back to like these products, they're just not worth it when I already have the Suntegrity. Okay, that was a lot. Now, let's talk about the Kinship Self-Reflective Rose Probiotic Moisturizing Sizing Sunscreen. Now, this kind of has the opposite side of this in that it's very moisturizing, it's very lotion-like, it's very dewy, um, but all that water and all that more cream-like feel make it also more prone to being able to sweat it off easily. So they do have a sport formula. I'm interested in trying that. Um, I will definitely use this up but it's too much on the moisturizer side for me. So because I have melasma, I need to know that my sunscreen is never gonna fail me. I need to know that that oil base, lots of binders, is holding those pigments in place to really protect my face from more hyperpigmentation. And these kinds of products, like they just feel like there's there's too much of a chance that I would need to reply and I don't need to reapply and I don't realize it. And that's when living in the tropics, like the melasma just comes back out. 
Okay, so moving on to the Lil Fox uh, June box from Beauty Heroes. First up, we have the Ambrosia Immortalis Eye Cream. I've got to say, I'm in love. I'm truly in love with this texture. It's a gel-like, balm-like moisturizer. It goes on so smooth, leaves this really dense emollient feel under the eyes, and it's just divine. It is the eye cream that I've been waiting for Green Clean Beauty to make that they haven't made. They've made more and more beauty oils for under the eye. They've made more and more just oil-based products that address concerns that are not there for those of us that have a lot of fine lines um, and a loss of volume. What I really need under the eye is more hydration. Um, and this product really feels like it can deliver the texture because I glaze it on at night. It's, it feels like it's staying in place. It's not just running all over the place. And then my eye area feels so soft and conditioned when I wake up. Uh, I, I would get the box alone just for this product because I'm obsessed with eye creams. You know, my eyes are really an area I'm sensitive to because I really feel like it shows my age um, because of all my squinting, all my sun exposure, just my genetics in general. I have really droopy fine lines around the eyes and um, I'm just really excited to use this over time. Now it has a lot of things in here, especially peptides that are designed to do things below the skin that might help with the under eye area. But the truth is just increasing hydration in this area um, will probably help my eyes look better. So anyway, I'm excited to be using this for 30 days as well and report back on that. Um, it also comes with this Blue Legume Shiitake and Microalgae Hydra Soothe Cream Mask. We've seen so many people move away from clay masks, from powder masks to more hydrating products. And for summertime, this just feels so perfect. The color, the, the smell has a very fresh basil, invigorating smell. It leaves skin soft and feeling moisturized, but cleansed and clarified at the same time. So, you know, I really liked the Lilla Fox Jungle Glow. That was like a really, I really loved that product for many years. And I haven't had that similar connection with a lot of their other products that came out later on. However, I feel that same sort of like joy rejuvenated inside for Lil Fox based on these two products. So anyway, again, everything is a first impression because these products have only been used for about two weeks. So really just like an initial like, okay, here's what I'm thinking. And I will report back to you with a full on review where I've tested things for 30 days, um, unless they just kind of fall along the wayside and I'm just like, meh. But hopefully I can just keep using things and update you further down the line. So thanks for watching. Bye.